Each win condition requires a different approach and understanding of the game's mechanics. Decks are often built with one primary win condition in mind, though they can have secondary methods to win if the primary condition is not achievable. Knowing your deck's win condition and how to efficiently work towards it while countering your opponent's strategy is vital to success in competitive play. What's going on, my boys? That was an excerpt from my book, Revival of the Duelist, about win conditions. We're going to be talking today about win conditions and also preparing my deck for locals. So if you guys are ready for this journey and you're ready to get into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, get back into the game, learn the game from the perspective of a master as he prepares his deck for the locals ahead, you need to hit that subscribe button and check out this video. Konami recently banned Borlo's Savage Dragon. They hit a bunch of stuff that I was utilizing personally and that forced me to make a change. So this entire time I've been working without a turn one going as a blind ghost second deck in master duel but in the tcg that's just not possible and you have to have some sort of turn one strategy so when i look into my book and i see chapter eight you know we talk about one card combos here and how they're powerful tools in initiating whatever you're trying to do but is the one card combo the win condition or is the one card combo the ends to the means? Because you will see in this video that my one card combo is not my win condition. I'm going a different route and I'm actually going for a stun type of board. I'm going for a stun type of capacity so that I can hold and maintain tempo throughout the duel. So let's check out that combination right now. All right, my boys, today we're going to have a little demonstration about the turn one combo. Now, a lot of you guys know that I play Gladiator Beast and I've been preparing myself to go back to locals. But what you don't know is that when I opened up my case, I did not receive SB Little Knight. And also with the banning of uh, Borlo, Savage Dragon, and Baron de Fleur, that was a direct attack on my deck. So right now, if you could think about it, I'm down three extra deck monsters. So in order for me to have an effective turn one strategy that will be uh, any type of effective against the meta, I must utilize the text and also the power of the hypergeometric distribution and the champion's equation to create a perfect go first scenario. Now, as we know, my go second combo is a one card combo, but my go first combo is a two card combo. And you might ask, why is that the case? It just is what it is. My deck needs a two card combo, but the two cards will be recouped. So that's why we like to call them 1.5 card combos. But let me show you how I do this combo and you'll really enjoy my first turn setup in spite of the lack, you'll see my power. So first we'll use fire formation Tinky because we're not gonna need it. Um, we're gonna use Tinky to add brotherhood of the fire fist raven now we do use this card to go get tinky but that's not the play we're on right now so we're going to go ahead and summon a rescue cat and activate the effect and then we're going to put out um two of the uh tribrigate kits so let's go ahead and do one kit and two kits all right two kits and then we're going to link two into blossom which is really great and then we're going to use Tribrigate's Kits Effect. Uh, and we're going to just get that line going. So Nerval. And then Nerval's going to add Karis. Now, now that we've added Karis, you know, typically people like to use this effect immediately. But you don't want to use this. Because this effect basically replaced Rescue Cat Summon. So technically, we're back on, you know, from the way our deck is built. We're back on the status of having a normal summon. And a special summon yet again so now that we've done that and we set up the graveyard we have four cards in the graveyard so we're almost ready so now we're going to use Karis effect to send dd crow to the graveyard now we run dd crow because dd crow is an omni card like i told you in my previous video this card is a hand trap that's effective against the meta since everyone's using graveyard effects just the same as a bestial 
in um, Jesse Cotton's deck. So in the same way, it serves that same function. But in my deck, because it's a Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast, it serves as a double utility as an Omni card. So now we're going to get rid of DD Crow and then we're going to summon out Karis. Now we're going to banish four cards in the graveyard, DD Crow, and we're very specific with this, Nerval, Rescue Cat, and one kit to bring out Shurig the Ominous Omen. Now we're not gonna do any banishing because that's not what we need to do here. And we're gonna go ahead and do Link to Shurig and Karis into Bearbrum. Now we're gonna use Shurig's effect to search our deck and we're gonna add a Horse of the Floral Knights, my faithful speed. Then we're gonna use the power of Blossom. We're gonna use our normal summon now to bring out the Horse of the Floral Knights. Horse of the Floral Knights effect activates on summon. It lets us add a light Noble Knight card to our deck. Now we've added Noble Knight Shield Bearer. Now don't activate the effect, but Noble Knight Shield Bearer um, effect will let us search a level uh, five. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, level six uh, Wing Beast not level six wing beast, I will level six beast steed that we can special summon when we have a level two monster in the field. But we don't need to do that, and this is also the first turn. So this that's something else. That's another one of those omni cards. But this is an omni card that works within our combo. So let's go ahead and use our fusion. So now we're gonna fuse these two cards and bring out Centarmina. Show you what I mean. Now now we bring out Centarmina. Centarmina's effect says when this card is on the field, you can use the effects for some level two or lower monster from your hand or the graveyard. This is a really cheap card. So go ahead and use this. We're gonna bring Tri Brigade Kit back, okay? Now we're gonna link three uh, here into Tri Brigade Rugal. So we're gonna use Centaur Mina and Blossom, link three into Rugal, and we're gonna place Rugal in the monster zone here. Now, we're, now we could use the effect of Blossom, but we're not just for the sake of the demonstration. And then also here, we have our, our, our next uh, Link 2, but we're not gonna do the Link 2 yet. We're gonna first activate Kit's effect that we brought back with Centaur Mina. Thank you, Centaur Mina. We're gonna banish um, two cards and we're gonna summon out um, the Ancient Warrior's Oath of the Double Dragons or the Double Dragon Lords. So we're gonna put him out and put him right here above Rugal. Now we have him sitting above Rugal and then we have um, uh, uh, the Lord and the Rugal sitting above each other. They have to be sitting like this specifically because we wanna set them up so that we can link to into our SP Little Knight, Pit Knight Early. Then we're gonna use Blossom's Effect now remember we added a card with Fire Formation Tinky. We don't need that card, remember I told you. So we're gonna send it back. And now we've just got plus two, okay? So you know, you got seven cards total, which can be, one of them can be utilized with this. We will get another card back, so that'll be plus three. You know, they're gonna bring back a card with Rugal next turn. And if we use that, you know, we're gonna put that card back in the hand. Then we also get the negate. And then of course we get the bounce. Now, because we have the negate here or with the pointing to at Rugal, that means we have full control over this negate. So this negate is 100% live at all times. And then we have the double dragon uh, Lords and then that's which is a bounce. And then of course, we're gonna get a card back from the grave. Not to mention our Ash Washington with Joy Splings with our Droll and Lockbird and we are gonna be able to set the revolt to get a banish. So the reason why this is good is because it falls into the principles of the turn one um, staples. You need to have these three things to make sure if you're building your own turn one combo that your turn one combo is good. Three signs that you know that it's good. Sign number one, you have at least a plus one or more. I have a plus two here, which can go into plus three. So I'm doing really good right there. Um, the second one, you cover at least three or more interactions going second. And what does that mean, three or more interactions? That means either your hand or field can stop your opponent three or more times. If your hand or field can't stop your opponent three or more times, it's a strong likelihood that they're gonna be able to break your board and complete whatever one card combo they are trying to achieve. So this deck currently, or this, current field setup can give me a negate and a bounce and a banish and also 
a uh, negate on search with Ash, and then of course uh, the Droll and Lockbird for my Floodgate. So this gives me four interactions and a Floodgate. If I can't win with that, I guess I'm just cooked. And then also the last and final rule, which is Floodgate when possible. And in my deck, I'm not running enough um, continuous traps or, or continuous spells to, to effectively run floodgates so I run floodgates in my hand which is Droll and Lockbird which is the best option for me since I can play it um, regardless of turn 1 or turn 2 and I can play it over the field that I've built and Droll and Lockbird regardless of my turn 1 field or my turn 2 field Droll and Lockbird plus my field is always game so my boys you're going to have to let me know what you think about this demonstration of the turn one combination. And then we'll be continuing the rest of our lesson in the future videos.